we do too. I got seven. Uh, I also got a seven. All right, opening Bellbringer for a sword here. Looks like they are going first. I'm curious to see what their build ends up being. I assume it's Thief, but we'll see how it plays out. Silent Purge here, our new Goblin Boy for Sword here. Really powerful card that can just randomly just ramp out of nowhere and get out of control late game. But still a good good Goblin Boy for Sword. Roll Knight on three, pretty big here. Hitting snipe there, not the best card to be hitting. Swing in here to bell ringer. I guess we're gonna get two in here. I wonder if in this scenario, maybe you should have gave uh, Punk Devil. Uh, or Punk Demon, the Bane here for like an expected four offensive, offensive turn, possibly. But I guess we'll see how this, this turn plays out for them. They do have to play one extra for all their spells, which is awkward because of uh, the Omen of Silence here on the board. We got we got the gentleman handshakes here. What can we do here on turn four? Like, no floor fencer feels pretty bad. Looks like they're just going ahead and get the storm guy out here to get the mill. Should pump up the uh, one drop as well. Yep. 
This is what I'm talking about. Goblin guy sometimes gets can get obnoxiously big out of nowhere, especially in the later turns of the game. You let it live for a turn and then <laughs> your opponent just like plays like three cards that mill a bunch of cards and suddenly it's swinging in for like six plus damage. Not including the mental damage it does when it randomly mills a card that you wanted off the top of your deck. All right, Lyriel coming down. A pretty big staple for, I think, most Abyss lists now. It just adds extra reach along with, uh, you know, we don't take damage here. All right, Wings of Lust. This is a really good card with Lyriel here. So the downside of taking the, your damage on yourself is no longer there. So most likely we're going to see, like, maybe an Izzerfield discard here. Possibly, while also still deal, dealing two damage. Oh, discarding a Zazel here. Wing of Lust definitely a card I feel like I might have slightly underrated because it does have some decent utility in Abyss for Death's Breath setups, Israfil setups, things like that. The fact that every Abyssless is basically playing Lyrial means the uh, damage you take does not matter unless you're playing Sanguine, when, in which case you do not want to play that card. <laughs> Alright, so Dark Alice in the grave, which is pretty big because if Sword ever gets to steal Dark Alice, the game gets really, really weird for Abyss. Gonna eat this. I think it's a four or five, right? So we're gonna just straight up heal four here, going to twenty three. The question here is, do we swing in the bell ringer? And the answer is most likely yes. Your opponent has what three ish cards in hand, I think. Oh, not swinging with the to the bell ringer. Even swinging in with the bell ringer into the bell ringer here is just like totally fine because it's going to take multiple cards to actually remove Soul Dealer. So I, I don't know if like leaving them the bell ringer was the correct play. Oh, there is already an Israfil in the grave. Um, I'm gonna let my last. 
last one for another bell ringer. Yeah. Uh, what about the past? All right, now we at least have some answers to this board state here next turn. We have two bell ringers that they have to get through here. Lyrio, though, coming in for the pings, which is pretty big, pressuring that life total here. Bring back Izzerfil. Evo with Evo point to clear this board up. Swing in for the big damage. Well, at this point, this does not like look like a very good uh, state to be in. Probably should have stole Israfil last turn. I mean, you do get an answer Israfil here. You can blow it up with the four cost spell that you did steal, but the board is still not looking too good for you. It'd be really funny to take Dark Alice here and just start swinging it in and banishing your own deck. <laughs> but actually, does the last word trigger in the way it comes back to your field or does it go to your opponent's field? These weird rulings I have to go search later. Effectively, effectively at 5 health here. Lyrill does represent 4 damage, so honestly you only need 3 damage on board to close out this game, even if you clear everything except Lyrill. I don't know how Sword is going to come back from this. I think if 
if Dark Alice works normally and you get the card back when it gets destroyed, if you pay the cost, like you can just banish 20 cards from your deck to clear this two cards off of this board. You can kill clear the Israfil, make your opponent discard three cards. And then hopefully you can get a win there. It would go back to the original. original yeah, OK, that's what I figured, but I wasn't sure I was going to have to check after this. Dark Alice does go back to the original owner's field if you use the effect. So this is painful. He took the bell ringer, I guess. Does he want the draw, I guess? But I feel like you just, you probably should have took Punk Devil, right? Punk Devil bit would have been pretty good. Um, On the attack declaration, I'll use her ability to burn me for two. All right, remembering to take the two, putting them to three. That, and this is where you're, you for, try to force your opponent to... <laughs> uh, she has six health. And, yeah, yeah, and have to attack it one more and then kill the elves, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I assume you use the effect to bring back Dark Alice, so you get the guaranteed swing next turn here. And then all you have to do is really worry about answering the bell ringer so your Dark Alice can swing in. By Leo, and then this should be game. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll attack with the Dark Alice for game. Yeah, you got it. Free game. Let's go, Abyss. 